you've downloaded Cursor, you've installed it, and you've opened a project ready to work on, what's the first thing you do? You're probably gonna wanna check out the settings to make sure everything is how you want it to be so you can be as productive as possible when you're crushing AI code. So the first thing to do is head to the top right corner here, click the cog. You can also hit uh, Command Shift J to, to open that as well. You can see that I'm logged in to my pro account here. If you're moving over from VS Code, you can obviously import your extensions, your settings, key bindings, which is what I did because I had quite a lot. I was using VS Code for some time and it made it really easy and painless to move over to Cursor. Cursor is pretty much, it's a fork of VS Code, so it's pretty much the same experience as you would expect. There's a few little changes, obviously, in the UI, like they move these icons over here to be horizontal instead of vertical, just to take up the space, but it is VS Code for all intents and purposes. Rules for AI. Now this is basically a sort of global prompt that gets sent to the LLM, whether it's Claude, whether it's GPT-4, whatever it is, this will get sent with every request. And I can't take any credit for this at all. I actually stole this from a, another guy called Ian who did a really interesting live stream with Sahil from Gumroad. Ian works for cursor and basically went through his flows and things and this a lot of this most of this is from him I added a few bits at the bottom here about giving me bash commands to create git branches and stuff because it's something i always forget when i start working with cursor and i'm using git is to uh, i for some, some reason just always do it on main and then i regret it instantly so i've asked it to give me commands to create new git branches i don't always follow it but it's there and it makes me feel better and then i've obviously asked it to give me bash commands as well to install composer packages the reason i do that and put specifically bash is because if you're using chat uh, it gives you a little one click run and you can run it in the terminal inside cursor so it's just a, a quicker way to do stuff so there's that and I, I'll, I'll put a copy of this below the video or wherever I posted the video, you will have access to these rules. And the other thing that you can do is create a cursor rules file in your repository, in your project. So this would be project specific. This is global, this always gets sent. And then if you have this enabled, it will look for a cursor rules file in your project, which I have here. And this obviously is, my name is Ian, this is just for, for an example, and it's, this is a Laravel project, so I'm telling it it's an expert Laravel developer using the tall stack, which is Tailwind, Alpine, JS, Laravel 11, and Livewire 3. And then I've put a couple of rules in place here uh, because it, it sometimes gets it wrong. Livewire changed from Livewire 2 to 3. The details aren't important, but there's a few things that cursor sometimes, even when you're using the latest model like Claude 3.5 Sonnet, will get it wrong. So I've had to tell it that Livewire components are in the app Livewire namespace and not app HTTP Livewire namespace, so it gets that correct. It sometimes uses emit and dispatch browser event instead of dispatch. Just little things that I've noticed as I'm coding in Laravel that it sometimes gets wrong. Same with AlpineJS, it tries to get me to add it manually sometimes, so I've put that in there as well. And then Laravel 11, I've told it that this kernel no longer exists. We use the root console instead that's the cursor rules we'll head back over here and I, I highly recommend doing that because if you keep this more generic then you can have your if i have a python project i can have specific cursor rules for my python projects and i can just copy them over to any new project that i start okay um, privacy mode enabled obviously why not you want to keep it as secure as possible it means that none of the code will be stored uh, if it's off they do save prompts and tell them telemetry data to improve cursor but that's i'll just keep that enabled uh, and that is the general tab so we'll go over onto models there's four tabs total beta's not really got much in it but we'll go to models and this is where you can decide which models you want to use i've disabled a few of them here because i'm never going to use most of these so gpt4 there's no point in using when i've got four o uh, opus and now I'm using Sonnet instead, so Opus can be turned off. I don't really use Cursor. GPT 3.5 Turbo and 4 Turbo is no, not going to use them either. I keep Mini 
enabled because sometimes this is quite nice. It's so, it's free. You get as many fast requests as you want. So you can use it as much as you want. And I use that if I'm just trying to chat, just trying to brainstorm some ideas or if I've got there's a piece of code that I need to ask a question of and what, to explain it, I'll use 40 Mini so that I don't use my fast requests on Sonic, which I get through so quickly. I've just had to upgrade again to add more fast requests because I'm literally just churning through these requests so quickly and it's it's painful. Obviously you get unlimited slow requests, but I've noticed for whatever reason, the timings when I work, sometimes it can be like 40 in the queue, 39, 38, and it's just, you can't get into a flow state with it. So I had to upgrade again. Cursor really know how to extract money from me. <laughs> and sometimes what I do if I'm, if I run out of fast requests, I can actually switch to my own API key here. I've got my API key in here. You can verify it, I can turn it on. This would then, for all requests to any Claude model, to any through Anthropic, would use my API key instead of going through Cursor. Uh, so I would use my Anthropic API key instead of going through Cursor. Uh, you can do the same for OpenAI. Um, I haven't used any Google Studio ones, so I wouldn't even know uh, about that. But uh, obviously, these are the main two. The one thing about using your own API key is that Composer does not work when you're using your own API key. So you do need to be using Cursor for that. And Composer is insane. Generally, I have to switch between the, these two. If I'm using chat, I can use this and enable my API key. If I'm wanting to use Composer and get more like into a flow state with it, then I have to switch back and just accept the slow requests. And you can also add your own models here as well. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but you can do that if you've got something else you want to use instead. And then we'll go to the features tab, which is, I keep it pretty standard, I think. I haven't really, I don't remember changing much. Cursor tab, you're gonna want. Uh, I'll do a video on this soon, but cursor tab is, it's like GitHub Copilot on steroids. <laughs> and it used to be called Copilot++. Plus Plus. It's auto completion, it's partial accepts, it's predicting where your cursor is gonna be. Next, it's doing multi-line edits. Uh, there's so many amazing things it can do. It can auto import. This is for uh, TypeScript. It can auto import modules if it uses a module that's not already imported. It's just insane. Cursor tab is just so quick and it just, you have to have it enabled. There's no reason not to. Composer, yes. Like you wouldn't, when you see Composer working and you understand how powerful it is to build features in with just one prompt, it's legitimately mind-blowing. This feels like the invention of the wheel <laughs> for AI code. It's just, what? So I love Composer. And yeah, you definitely want that to be enabled. And then these settings here, I don't know if they're standard. I don't remember changing them. Projects you want to turn on as well. It's in alpha at the minute, but projects are really cool. I'll do a video on that soon. It just means that you can share context between different composers. And then obviously you want, you want to see suggested files and file pickers and stuff like that. This section here is the code base indexing. So every when you're adding files to Cursor, uh, you might notice that when you're chatting with it, it's forgetting what, what's been done and what changes have been made, and it sometimes can overwrite them. It's because it hasn't been resynced on this index. So sometimes you have to quickly hit the settings icon up here and then hit reset sync. I would love it if they would just give us a keyboard binding so that I can just hit that binding and it instantly resyncs the index. I don't want to have to click here, click into features, click down here and resync. I'd like to just have a keyboard binding, but I think I'm being picky uh, at this point. <laughs> uh, and then there's some settings here that I haven't touched. I index new folders by default. So it will index anything that's new been added. Ignore files. You can obviously have a list of ignored files if you want to, but it will use git ignore anyway to do that, no worries there. Docs, now this is where you can actually manage custom docs. You can do this from here, or you can just do in chat, you can do at doc, at docs, and it will just give it a URL basically. So I've given it a URL to the Livewire docs, and it's indexed 49 pages here. So it can help me to understand Laravel Livewire a bit better. You could obviously add in Ruby on Rails, you could add in Next.js, whatever you want, and it will index these pages and then use these for to hopefully give you better results. And then we're getting into like personal preference type area here yeah, in the chat. So you want always search the web turned off. Um, <laughs> you don't want to be searching the web every time. What I tend to do is uh, do at 
and then paste a URL in when I want it to check something and then it can do that and it will search the page. I don't want to be using the search every time, it's really slow. Um, fade chat, this is just a little stream in effect and then default no context, that, that, this is just default stuff. Um, which I don't really, haven't adjusted. Narrow score bar, again, it's just visual. These are, a lot of these are, are visual things. I do like to have a chat history because I like to see what, go back sometimes and remind myself what I've searched for. Maybe some things need to be extracted out into projects or whatever that I can reuse later. And then there's just a bunch of other sort of styling within the editor here, which I just keep pretty standard stuff. And then the beta, God, I'm sounding American. I've been watching too many American videos. The beta, <laughs> that's English, there we go. Uh, these two are just on by default. I don't really use them. Um, use Claude's longer token, which is great because then you can add in, I, I actually do this quite a lot, actually. I've just lied as I look at the tooltip. I do actually mention folders a lot. If I've got a folder of Livewire components and I want to build a new one, I can just at mention that folder and then all of them get added to the context. So the LLM has a broader understanding of how all my components work together, how they dispatch events, whatever. So I do use that. And the AI review, I've just enabled this yesterday. I haven't actually used it yet, but it can scan uh, the current Git diff. Uh, just check it for bugs and things. Uh, it's in alpha at the minute. So I don't know how well it will work. Um, I haven't really tried it yet to be fair, but I would really like to be able to use AI to not only check the diff uh, for any bugs, but also to just write my commit messages for me as well uh, and just make it really streamlined and smooth process so that I don't have to bother. Uh, and that's it on the settings. I feel like I rambled a little bit and most of them I don't tend to use, but I think I've covered the core features here. If you have any questions, you can, of course, hit me up on X at Ian Nuttall and I'll try and answer them for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll post this in below the video as well. Cheers.